Okay, let's talk about the dry work that we like to use in the PT. So we discussed that earlier in that initial intro video. When we're doing dry work, it's probably the, the easiest thing an athlete can do on their own and the best use of the pocket path. And we've had a ton of success with this and I wanna show you how I set it up if I have that injured athlete that's starting to throw for the first time. Because we know getting them to kind of get back into that swing of things and get over that fear is probably the number one concern for those athletes, I was that guy, labrum surgery, coming back for it. So if I wish I had this, and this is what we would do. So I'm gonna set it up in the position that we call the low pocket. So there's two positions that you're gonna get your athlete uh, to set up. There's the high pocket where you're putting it right up underneath the armpit, and then you're putting the Velcro strip on. And the reason why the high pocket's really good is because you might be more position player rehab, catchers, infielders, those positions, and that's gonna be from a higher pocket here. Now, pitcher-wise, we're gonna go down to that lower pocket, which good, could also work for infielders as well. So um, it's, a, it's probably about 80 to 90% of the time we're actually putting them into this position first. All right, I got my belt on. I'm gonna take the sleeve, and the sleeve I'm gonna place first, just in a, a neutral position, slightly angled at about 30 degree. The reason I'm in that 30 degree angle is, is the arm likes to flow through that kind of angle. So we wanna create that rather than it being uh, flat down here, I wanna create that angle for them. So this is uh, prior to the flow drill, I'm gonna put them into here. We're gonna do 10 reps for the first time them ever throwing, getting them to know the three positions to get to that arm swing, to be able to get that fourth position, which is the rotation. So one position, I'm coming out, and all I want them to kind of get comfortable with here in the, in the dry work is just that break, that simple break, turning the fingers on top, very important place to be. If I don't turn the fingers on top, you're gonna to see some of these athletes wanna kind of curl around their rib cage, and now they get stuck here and get tense. So I'm gonna have them get in the sleeve and start to get that, that position of turning and coming up. Now, two position is a little higher position. We call this the power position. And the reason we call it a power position is this is where you're gonna see punchers throw. This is where you're gonna see the pitchers all get to. This is gonna be a place where you, I tell people push-ups, you're gonna be in that position of strength rather than out here. If I try to do a push-up, it gets a lot harder to do. If I came inside, it gets much harder to do as well. So getting them and their brain, with dry work only, to get that feeling of timing it to the two and almost letting the flow happen and not forcing that. So I'm just getting them to nice lightly do 10 of these. Once they've done 10, now I'm gonna incorporate the hips. That's our three position. So I go to the two position and I get them to start turning their hips. A reset, two position, turn their hips. The cue here is to let them relax into that two position. Do not force this position. This is a relaxed position. And when my hips turn, I feel my shoulder blade starting to come together. And that's that scap retraction, unforced. Not this, here. So really emphasize with that new player. Get to the one, two, hips. One, two, hips. And then to get to the fourth position, that final phase of just throwing the ball, I'm gonna put it into a kind of a choppy position first and then get them to smooth it out. One, two, three, four, nice and easy, relax. That's the first time that they're gonna kind of get that feeling of pronating and reaching out and throwing. Nice and choppy in the beginning. Get them to kind of say the numbers in their head. One, two, three, four. Two things here I like to do as well. Keep your foot planted and let it rotate and finish planted, okay? The reason I'm doing that is I'm teaching them how to stay back. Oftentimes, if they're gonna make a mistake, they might come together, one, two, three, and four come together almost simultaneously. So to create that torso separation, that kinetic chain working from a hip, torso, arm sequence, we wanna make sure that they stay planted and turn their hip. So they should finish, you should be able to see the back of their heel if you're standing behind them. If you're not seeing it, they're probably not doing a great job of learning to turn their hips. So again, although this is grooving the arm path, if you start to see this, notice it, this is about timing with the hips. So it's getting your arm in the right strong power position, hips turn, and then that stretch cycle happens. We close the gap through our chest and we reach, reach out and extend the throw. So again, we've done our dry work. This is week one or week two. A lot of teams like to use this before they grab the plyo ball or a baseball. Some teams are, are plyo ball heavy, some teams aren't, 
But the good thing is we've had a ton of success with teams that take this approach first to be able to start to get the confidence of the pitcher or the position player to start to return to the throwing before they've picked up a ball and then simultaneously start grooving the timing and the simplicity of a delivery that maybe pre-injury could have looked stabby, rappy, tense press back, all those things that we want to get them to kind of get rid of and start to simplify their delivery so it's easier to repeat and in stronger positions so they can time their hips and into their lead leg blocking.